are listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. It's back to Halloween, and uh, Miss, I'm on a very top-level project, but can't talk about it. The Always in Demand, Ashley Palmer is here at Peter Shinkota, formerly of the show Falling Skies. And I say formerly because that show's off the air by next week, when that show just fucking tanked itself. Doomed, oh, and okay. then obviously Tom Vitorino, manager, uh, very kind of you, industry very expert very extraordinaire, very kind. Uh, but also uh, Tyson Saner uh, should be in joining us with a little bit of his expertise, if you will. Uh, Tyson, <laughs> it, it is Halloween, and uh, I think we should let's go around the room real quick before Tyson starts. Everyone, give us our listeners a Halloween recommendation. I know you're probably going to say Paranormal Activity. There's probably some residual check deal connected to that for you, Ashley. But <laughs> oh, no, can you recommend gosh. something outside of that for our listeners to check out this Halloween? What do you well, recommend? I think they should check out Hall- uh, Halloween, uh, Paranormal Activity 4 so that it does really well and wow. they have the money to make 5. and 5, and hopefully the but, casting yeah. pool goes back yeah. your way, as it should. Smart move. See? That's smart mm-hmm. move. Intelligence. And we said that we should have a female president. Well, that's evidence of... Uh, I uh, would love to be your female president. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, let's get a campaign together. There's always uh, time. Peter, what's Halloween recommendation? Oh, <laughs> what's the shit. question? Uh, right. Uh, what do you got? Give us a quick recommendation. Uh, I say The Omen, the original Richard Donner. Okay, Omen. that's good. Omen that's one. good. Tom? Creepy. Um, I, I would uh, say for Halloween to all the moms out there who would be taking their kids around to dress either in the French maid or the naughty nurse outfit. That's well, hold on. We're talking about a movie recommendation, <laughs> not your costume, <laughs> oh, not your uh, fantasy uh, uh, for Halloween. Um, a movie I would say uh, Zombie Hookers 1, the original. Zombie <laughs> Hookers, laid to rest. Okay, uh, and now Tyson, you. You have a recommendation or something to discuss related to Halloween. Yes, absolutely. Um, I actually watched uh, three films this week. Uh, there was The Wolfman from 1941 starring Lon Chaney Jr., which I had never seen up to this point. Really? Uh, classic universal horror film. Mm-hmm. I followed that up with the 2010 remake starring Benicio Del Toro as the same character, uh, Larry Talbot, Lawrence Talbot, and uh, then polished that off with Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, which is the last time that Lon Chaney Jr. appeared as... Uh, the character Larry Talbot, but yeah. the fifth time in total on film, wow. you know, <laughs> aside from the remake, sorry. It's funny, uh, Lon Chaney Jr., uh, Creighton, as he was really named, um, you know, before his father died, Lon Chaney, the excellent Lon Chaney, who to this day remains one of the best performers Hollywood has ever had. He was, Lon Chaney Sr. was supposed to be Dracula. Uh, he passed away unexpectedly. Bella Lugosi got the role. Bella Lugosi was supposed to be Frankenstein, but... Uh, he didn't want it because the part had no dialogue, and Boris Karloff got his start. But going back to Lon Chaney Jr., the name he took, who um, later committed suicide, tried to commit suicide. He died of throat cancer, but blamed it on the Wolfman movies. Um, he what? was his Yeah, his dad um, did not want him in entertainment. His dad pulled him out of Hollywood High and made him become a... Wanted him to be a plumber, said, you're not doing this. Because his dad was a performer during the Great Depression and knew how hard it could be. As awesome as Lon Chaney was, I don't think he, you know, career-wise, financially, was ever that personally secure. I think he was always on to the next project. But Lon Chaney Jr. got the role of the Wolfman and did it, uh, he claimed in an interview, he did it six times. Some people may think that it was a television appearance. But you're in my wheelhouse now, and unfortunately, all the production notes to that movie, the mm-hmm. Wolfman, the original Wolfman, are lost. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, make the comparison. So you also saw the Benicio del Toro remake. Yes, I uh, I enjoyed it. I don't know. Um, Peter I'm, just I, Peter just Peter's chuckling to himself. Let me tell you something, Peter, about Tyson. Tyson always tries to find the bright side of life, so he's going to find the positive to a movie. Okay. You know, so you know, that's why he reaches. He's 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 that kind of generous spirit. So it's okay, Tyson. You can like it. I thought that <laughs> the relationship in it it was at least believable because if you look at the first one, Claude Rains and Lon Chaney Jr. do not look like father and son. They look like they're the same age. It's almost ridiculous to kind of see him trying to play that role. I'm a huge Claude. I was a huge Claude Rains fan. Have you seen the original Wolfman? Uh, Ashley no. Palmer needs to see. Homework assignment for you. I saw Teen Wolf. Okay, Teen Wolf. <laughs> how, about, yeah. how about the Teenage um, Wolfman with uh, uh, Michael Landon in it? Okay, that's good, too. Yeah, all right, all right. Um, I think we're getting off topic, though. So you you did like the remake, Tyson. I, I did. I did enjoy the remake, yeah. I didn't. I mean, it's... Um... Yeah, I'd recommend looking at it, but I'd like people to at least watch the first one or the original one first uh, to get, um, even though it's actually fairly upsetting. And actually, um, so what you're saying is they didn't, did they not get along, or they just not have any father-son chemistry on screen? You or? know, I don't want to. I obviously I don't. I I never met Lon Chaney Jr. But the story is he didn't get along with most people and was kind of a notorious, uh, you know, rather rather rough drunk. 
But that's a that's a discussion mm-hmm. for another time. Uh, you know, his very dramatic his, film. His co-host in that film, Evelyn Akers, did a lot mm-hmm. of movies with him, and they did not like each other. Um, they were both on record as saying they hated each other. Universal kept matching them up. You know, so I don't know. He also had p- very public conflicts with Jack Pierce, the head of makeup, who designed all the Frankenstein makeup and that stuff. But Jack Pierce fought with everybody too. He was actually ousted, I think, eventually because of his personality issues. But uh, you never really know. I mean, the thing about the movie, the original, they got the atmosphere right. They had great design. You know, the movie made in its day like somewhere over a million dollars, which was big in 1941. Oh, yeah, especially um, with a budget of $180,000 originally. Yeah, but like I said, they don't really come off to me as father and son, and at times Lon Chaney's character is just obnoxious. Like when he spies on the girl with the telescope and goes oh, into the creepy. antique shop. That was and, really creepy. You know, he, he wants earrings, and she's like, we don't have any earrings or something. And he says, well, yeah, you do. I saw them I, when I was looking at you from the cal- the palace telescope. It's just like this weird kind of forced yeah. chemistry. Like he's really not – psychotic he's actually quite charming in his weird demented kind of way it's like you can't even really like him as a character at times i think personally sounds like a political candidate i know uh, yeah, he's not <laughs> up, um, let's have some romnesia and move forward um, but uh you know anyway it, it, you know it's but it is a movie that you got to see and it's kind of upbeat and it's interesting and correct I don't, i'm pretty sure the dvd actually has a film historian commentary commentary to it i don't know but i don't know who does it pardon I said, which one which one is uh what does the commentary? I don't know. I said the original Wolfman has a commentary to it, but I'm not sure who does the commentary. Oh, I'm not sure either. I, I can look it up later. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I don't know, or I can look it up now. Actually. One cool thing about the remake that I thought was a good idea was <laughs> there's a scene in there where the father has a dungeon he locks himself into during the full moon to kind of contain himself. And mm-hmm. I actually thought that was a pretty cool idea because if you knew you're the savage monster, why don't you put yourself in a jail cell? But you know what? Your third recommendation uh, Abbott and Costello Meet the Monsters? Was that it? Um, well, it was Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. It was the first of the Meet the Monsters films for them when they crossed over the uh, classic uh, monster rally of the big three, Wolfman, Frankenstein's monster, and Dracula character. Pretty cool. And, Wait, yeah. not, not to, I want to make sure I got the right movie. Is that the one where Glenn Strange played Frankenstein? Yes, although he, did, he actually played Frankenstein a couple times, but uh, absolutely, he did play... Um, Frankenstein and Abner Costello meet Frankenstein as well. Yes. I want to it's tell weird. you. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I want to tell you that if you're going to be a monster character during at Universal in the 30s and 40s, Glenn Strange is the best name you could possibly have. Yeah, no doubt. Huh? That is a great stage name. Go ahead, Tyson, real quick. Oh, it's fantastic. Real quick, which? Did you have a specific? No, no, you continue. I interrupted you. Oh, no. Well, so, yeah, Abner Costello meet Frankenstein. This was... Uh, well, I, I went down the rabbit hole, which is the history of Universal Monsters, which uh, apparently started in the 1930s and ended in, ni- oh, sorry, it was 1923 to 1960, but I've now come in the middle, so I'm going to need a chart, because I found out that the sequel to The Wolfman, which is Frankenstein versus The Wolfman, is the second film for The Wolfman, but it's actually the fifth film for Frankenstein, so uh, now... Yeah, I can't yeah, but yeah, I can't remember that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's, uh, there is a, there's some sort of... <laughs> There is some sort of chrono uh, with like order to the to the. Like thing. I said, I'll make a chart. I'll All those chart. movies, yeah, we should come back and actually discuss these movies at length. All these movies are pretty interesting. It is awesome to fathom the possibility of Lon Chaney playing Dracula because he was unreal as Phantom of the Opera, and he was even in the silent era. His performances are so loud in a way, even though and it, just the idea of him playing Lugosi's part, Lugosi being a veteran of World War One on the Austro-Hungarian side, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, very. Lugosi's a great choice. He's obviously the staple. And you know, at night they used the same sets and shot the Spanish version, which is also available, I think, in the DVD pack. Very interesting. But oh, yes. let's do a part two to this, Tyson, because of time. So let's break this Absolutely. down. And we're going to start November off and continue with Halloween and do the classic breakdown. I saw a long chain of jewelry walking with the queen. Ooh. Doing the werewolves of London. 